Who we'll got swept by us in finals? <laughs> <laughs> Very good point. <laughs> 95-85. <laughs> Carmelo Anthony leads the way with 23 on 5 of 8. Russell Westbrook goes 28-9. LeBron, 15-7-8. Points off of turnovers, 32 for the Lakers. That's a season high. They cruise in that 28-point lead. Hold on to win by 10. Let's go back. Frank Vogel, speaking with Mike in the media. Hey, Frank, just curious the thought process in the, with the small lineup tonight and how much that had to do with what you guys had decided versus Dwight's uh, unavailability and, and what you thought of the result. Yeah, no, we decided yesterday just, uh, you know, we've been talking about uh, certain points of the season to explore our roster flexibility and, um, you know, the way, uh, the way Houston plays, this just seemed like a, a good opportunity to look at, just look at that. Um, I also liked uh, the way we, we finished the fourth quarter uh, against Cleveland, having uh, Bays and Avery out there. Uh, you know, guarding the other two teams' uh, best perimeter players and AD at the five. So uh, just something we want to look at as a starting group. Um, you know, one of those guys would be the backup center, either DJ or Dwight. And Dwight being a scratch, uh, we used DJ. He was great. And, um, you know, glad we got the win. And, and then, Frank, just what did you think of the defense the first three quarters in particular? And it, was there some evolution from what you've seen the previous few games? Yeah, huge growth uh, on the defensive side of the ball, not because of the lineup. Uh, but because of our work, you know, we've been really hammering the details with these guys, uh, the areas, uh, you know, that we're, we've been failing. And, um, you know, we've had very productive film sessions and, you know, they've been challenged uh, with things like containment and low man and, uh, you know, executing their coverages the right way um, and finishing possessions, you know, which we did a much better job hitting people, uh, very lax with our box outs the last few games. Um, but all those areas were improved tonight. Frank, the, the three-point shooting of Carmelo has been obviously great uh, all seven games, really. But what did you make of his just total performance tonight and, and what he did for you guys defensively? And, and what has he brought to this group kind of in all facets? Yeah, I, I'm, I didn't expect to, have, to see him have a, a defensive performance like he did tonight. And he was great. You know, I mean, uh, just you know, forget about the steals and, and um, you know, blocks and strips. He's always good with his hands. Uh, but he was in the right position, and you know he's. When you watch him on tape coming into this year, like the effort's there. You know, what I mean, he, he plays hard on that side of the ball. Um, you know, we got to protect him in certain ways, and, and we're we're figuring that out and um, landing in some good spa good spots with that. And uh, you know, we're asking him to, to do things within our system, like have low man collisions, uh, which he was great with tonight. You know, uh, he, he's willing to do all these things. He can do all these things, and. Um, you know, when he's you know, providing that kind of performance on the defensive side of the ball with the way he's shooting it, uh, he's a huge part of our win tonight. Frank, to the eye test, it, it appears that like a handful of Mello's looks on any given night are wide open. Uh, how, how much is that a product of him you know, being able to read where the ball is and space? And how much is that the things that you guys are doing uh, to draw the defensive attention to the ball to allow him to be in those spots? Yeah, well, he knows, you know, he knows the spot, the right spots to be in. And, um, you know, we, we, we always try to put him on the backside when we're running certain action, uh, knowing that the defense is going to collapse. And, and we want him to, be, him, him to be the recipient of those types of plays. So it's a little bit of him, you know, finding windows, uh, you know, to get himself open. And, you know, uh, a lot of, you know, we got three guys that can really put pressure on the rim in, in Russ, Braun, and AD. Hey, Frank, um, with LeBron's dunk and, you know, what we saw from Carmelo on both ends, it seemed like the guys were really having fun out there. Like, did you notice a different type of energy from the guys tonight? Most of the night. I think, look, when they lock into the defensive side of the ball, this group, um, at least this group the last few years, and, and then the new guys coming into our culture, when they do the little things and, you know, the other team's struggling to score and the ball's flying all over the place and we're getting out and in transi transition, you know, that's, that's Laker basketball. You know, and that's when we're going to have the most fun. Um, you know, the ball didn't move as well in the second half, but, um, you know, defensive stops the breaks, you know, defines our, our culture. And uh, speaking of earlier, one of the more surprising stats for blocks. And you heard Mello talking to Mike Trudell about that. Guys, check this out. He was five of eight from three. I know you guys talked about this in the pregame show. His, 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 his home and, and, and away splits are, are, are insane. He's 23 of 34, big game James, from three at Staples Center. No wonder why the crowd loves him. Yeah, they love him. You know, 
less travel. You don't have to get on that airplane. Older veteran. No, I, I think, you know, just experience of knowing how to bounce back from a, a, a subpar game that he didn't like. And also, like he said, getting used to, you know, understanding the tendencies. Tonight was, was, was an exceptional play of, he said, it, get into his spots, not rushing in, being patient, being in the right spot. When LeBron, Westbrook, anybody's going downtown, he has some really nice shots. So I expect this of him most of the season, a veteran player, they know how to bounce around pretty good. You know, for me, when, when I watch Carmelo play, I always want to watch that first shot because he's such a guy, when he sees that first shot go down, mm -hmm. that means he's hot. Yeah. And if he shoots a great shot, that's what you want to see. And that first shot he took was no one near him. So it was an easy shot. He saw it go down, and I said, uh-oh, that's all he needs to keep, keep going and going. He's like a microwave, so he's hot. When he's, when he's hot, he's one of the best shooters in the game. Yeah, so on the second day of free agency, the Lakers signed four players. Three young guys, you know, they, they agreed to terms with THT. Uh, they got Malik Monk and they got Kendrick Nunn, and they also got Carmelo. Had, had you told me that Carmelo, of those four, would be the most impactful this quickly in the season, I would have said, you're out of your mind. Obviously, THT and Nunn, a non-factor right now, they're not playing, but picking up Carmelo and seeing him do even more than he did in Portland. You know, he got his 14, 15 points a game up there. He's getting like 20 every other game down here. Just, just a great, great start for him in a Laker uni. It's interesting when, when, you know, Rob, we always joke about how you said that one night. Uh, listen, it, there's a big four. It's not just a big three. Um, and when, when he has nights like this, and he's had them now a few times, it takes a lot of pressure off of LeBron and AD and Russ to kind of have to come up with all the offense, big game James. And it's nice to have that ball moving and, and find someone else like a Carmelo Anthony. Well, it's just like when LeBron is out, now we have Westbrook who can handle that, the rock and, and run the team. Carmelo is another one of those veteran players that, when called upon, if, if a player's out, or say if a player's in foul trouble, he can step up. He's done it just about everywhere he's gone. And he, you know, exemplified that tonight by knocking down some more threes. Defense, I think the more minutes he gets out there, he can be one of those guys that if somebody's not around or somebody's injured or we need some quick buckets, he's a go-to guy. He's, he can probably start on a lot of teams in this league. And coming off this bench and be able to sit back and watch how the Lakers play. Because sometimes the Lakers will play fast, sometimes they play slow. I think Carmelo is a, is a seasoned vet where he can sit and say, okay, this is what I need to do when I come in the game. And that's what I like about him coming off the bench. He's a very intelligent player. We don't talk about that enough. He can watch and analyze the game say, okay, this is where I can get my shots. This is where I can help the team out. But I think he said it best. He's learning the defensive scheme a lot better. If you watch his rotations tonight, he was getting a foot in the lane. He was getting mm -hmm. back. He was being active. And that's what I wanted to say, because we know what he can do offensively, but what can you do defensively? I know the Rockets aren't a great team, but defensively tonight, the Lakers looked a lot sharper than they have the last couple games in terms of their rotations and, and their schemes. You heard Melo tell that to Mike Trudell. They turned the Rockets over 27 times for 32 points. That's a season high. Uh, also a season high in steals with 15 breaths. Yeah, really impressive on the perimeter. Uh, Avery Bradley, you know, a lot to do with that. Russ had a really nice game defensively, too. He was at uh, plus 26 the last I checked. Uh, you got to give these guys credit. I mean, this is a very young, uh, talented, but erratic Houston backcourt. Jalen Green, uh, two of seven tonight. I mean, you know, the Lakers really clamped down on him. He had 30 the other night. Um, Porter, again, you know, can, can get a little crazy sometimes on the court there, but the Lakers kind of bottled him up. Those two guys combined, eight for 20. You know, that, that's good defense by the Lakers, period, no matter how young uh, or old the backcourt might be that they're going up against. Rob, how much did you, you think it, it, it had to do with that starting lineup as well? A little more uh, attention to, to defense on the perimeter. You look at an Avery Bradley, you look at Baysmore kind of setting that tone. LeBron, Russ, and AD all kind of came out with that focus tonight. Yeah, if you look at what the Lake, I mean, what the Rockets put out there, it was a smaller lineup. Mm -hmm. It was a more active lineup. It was a lineup more conducive to the Lakers going. Uh, well, I want to say small because LeBron is still a big in my eyes. <laughs> but, you know, going small and they putting AD at the five. And the perimeter defense was nice, man. And I see why the Lakers welcome Avery Bradley back with open arms because when he was pressuring Jalen Green, he was like, okay, yeah. rookie, let me show you what the NBA is about. about. He turned the ball over. He was able to start seeing. And that's the thing that, that, that Avery Bradley, he can cause a lot of conflict on the outside when he plays his defense because when you have a guy like that, 
playing that defense, that aggressive, it forces those guys to drive. And what you're going to do, you're going to drive mm -hmm. them to the shot blockers back there. So it's going to make it a lot easier for the guys to funnel guys like that when Avery Bradley is up in their grill like that, force them to the baseline or to the sideline. No question. Uh, you know, Avery Bradley, you know, when none comes back, when Tucker comes back with his, you know, with his Wayne span, they're going to have some guards that, can really create havoc. And that's the one thing about, uh, you know, Coach Vogel, the, the, the beauty of that is he has different scenarios he, he can throw at you. If one guy's not having a, a good defensive, you know, game, he can come off the bench with somebody else, with, with uh, Bradley or somebody that, that can defend and disrupt. So, yeah, there's a lot of guys that can get the, 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 the job done. Reeves is another guy that can come in, very disruptive on the defensive end. So they got a lot of cards they can play depending on what the lineup is, that, that worked for them. Yeah, and keep in mind, Avery Bradley went through training camp and preseason with, with Golden State. He was cut by the Warriors towards the end of it. He's been with the Lakers for, what, 10 minutes, it feels yeah. like? He's already getting starting gigs, hitting big shots, and playing great defense. Yeah. All right, guys, well, let's get